Are you tired of spending hours scrolling through endless job boards, applied to hundreds of listings, and hearing nothing back? The job hunting process can feel very overwhelming and repetitive, but what if I told you there is a way to automate most of that process by using software and AI to find a list of job opportunities that are tailored just for you without a single line of code? But before we go any further, let me give you a demo on how this works. So here you can see this is the entire workflow and start by having a timer that sets an interval. So by the interval hits, for example, every three hours, we're going to pull data from LinkedIn job list. And then for each of the job posting, we're going to use the existing table to filter out the duplicates. And then we're going to extract the job posting data using HTTP request. And then based on the data that we extracted, we're going to ask questions to ChatGPT to collect the job summary as well as the job match percentage based on how well a job seeker's profile matches the job posting. And lastly, we're going to add this data to our table. And to give you an idea what the end result look like for the table and here we have the job title job description the date when we collect the job as well as the link for where we can apply the job and then lastly the key information here is the job match percentage this job match percentage is a score that indicates how well the job seekers profile matches the job posting description and based on the data that i collected is ranged from 85 all the way down to five now, everyone has a different result for the job match percentage. We can use the job match percentage to filter out jobs that have a low job match percentage and help us to focus on jobs that have a higher chance for us to get the offer. So that's why in this video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to achieve this automation using make.com, RSS feed, Airtable, and ChatGPT. So whether you're currently looking for jobs or someone looking to save time when apply for jobs, this guide will transform the way you approach job hunting. So if you're interested, let's dive in and get started. All right, so the first step is to create our make.com account. And here you can see I have already created the account. And once you create the account, you can go ahead and click on the create new scenario. And here you can see we can be able to create a new scenario. And here I'm just going to give it a new name for the scenario called daily job collector. So then what we do is we're going to right click and add a module. And here you can see we have a timer and this will be a cron job. Or in this case, we are going to set a schedule on how often this job will be run. So let's say we're going to run this every three hours. So that's going to be 180 minutes. And the way how we're going to pull the data from LinkedIn is we're going to use an app called rss.app to basically convert those job postings into data format that we can collect. And if you were to look at the plans for this product, we're going to use the free trial version and the free trial version is using the basic plan. And for this basic plan, we can have up to 25 posts per feed. So if we have a LinkedIn job list, then it will basically fetch up to 25 posts for that job list. However, if we want to get more jobs, then we can get up to 15 feeds, in this case, 15 job lists. And for each job list, we can have up to 25 job posts. And then for each feed, there is a 60 minute refresh rate. So for every 60 minutes, it's going to revisit that LinkedIn job list and then fetch new jobs every 60 minutes or so. And if you were to do the math, here you can see we have 15 job lists. And for each list, we can be able to fetch maximum of 25 jobs. And that will give us 375 jobs in just one single run. And because for this application, it gave us a one hour refresh rate. So every hour it's going to refresh new feeds. If there are new jobs, it's going to repeat that process to find new jobs and add it to our table. So now we understand how we extract data from LinkedIn using RSS. Now let's take a look at how to sign up our RSS account. So then we're going to navigate to rss.app and then we're going to click on sign up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on create new feed. And then we're going to paste the URL for the job list. So here is the link for all the jobs for the search. So we have full stack and then the location is Canada. So I'm going to copy this link and navigate to rss.app and then paste the URL. And then we're just going to generate. All right, so once it's finished generating, now you can see we have a list of feed for all the jobs that we have for the job list. So once it's finished generating, we can then uh, copy the XML that's generated and search for the RSS in maker.com. And we're gonna click on this and paste the URL here. And then we can do is we can uh, specify the date. So we can be able to select the feed from this date to this date. And we can also select the number of return items. So I believe the maximum return items that it can return is 25, but at this case, we can just put 30 for now. So I'm just gonna click on okay. And then I'm just gonna run this. And then it's going to search for all the feeds. And if we were to click on the search, you can see that below here, these are all the feeds that we collect, right? So we have our input. So we're going to hit search in that URL. 
and then we're going to request for 30 items, right? And here you can see we have the name of the job and we have an HTML for description. And here we have the link for the LinkedIn job post. And if we were to scroll all the way down, you can see that we have about 25 items found. Okay, so once we have all the jobs, now what we can do is we can be able to put them in a table. So we're just gonna search for the air table and here it says to create a connection. So we're just gonna click on a create a connection if you haven't created the connection for air table. And I'm just gonna go ahead to create our air table account and click on sign up for free for Airtable.com. So then while it's generating our Airtable account, so here you can see for creating a connection, we can either select the Airtable uh, token or key, or we can be able to use the OAuth to uh, set the connection. So here I'm just gonna use the OAuth to set up the connection. So here is asking which workspace we wanna select. So I'm just gonna select a random one. I'm gonna change the name later. So then we're going to grant the access. And then here is asking for selecting the base. So I'm gonna use the same workspace. And then it's asking for me to choose the table. So I'm going to create the table here. Okay, so then what I did is that here you can see I changed the workspace name to job board. And then inside of job board here for documentation is gonna be the table. And we are going to have the title for the job. And then here I'm just gonna change the column name for the table. And then here we're going to have the job description and it's going to be a long text. And we're gonna save this. And then we're going to update our another column called last, up, last update. We're going to change this to job date. So when was this job added inside of our table, right? We also need another one for the link. So I'm just going to edit this and it's gonna be the job link. And then for the rest of them, we're just gonna delete it for now. And we can always add it back later in the future. Okay, so we only need those four fields. So now if we were to click on refresh, you can see we have the title, job description, job dates, and job link. And now since we have already retrieved the RSS feed items, we can then be able to specify which is the title, right? So this is gonna be the job title. And then for the job description, we're gonna put this. And then for the job date, we can be able to mark the timestamp for when was the item collected, okay? And then for the job link, we can click on the link here for the RSS items. Okay, so if everything looks good, we can click on okay. So now what we can do is we can be able to click on run once, and this will basically retrieve all the RSS feeds and put them into our Airtable records. So if I were to come to our table, you can see here that we have our title, and this is the title for the job listing. And then here is the job description, and then here is the job date on when the the records was collected. And then here's the job link for each job, for, for each of those job posting. So then what we can do is we can be able to add a filter. So if there is any uh, existing records that are added, or if there's any feeds that we retrieve that are already exist inside of our Airtable, then we can be able to remove that from our filter. So I'm going to create a module, select the Airtable, and then we're gonna click on search records. So first we're gonna collect all the job lists that we have and we're going to click on the job board and table we're going to use the documentation that we have and then we're going to select the job link and for the formula we're going to use the job link is equal to the link here and then we're just going to click on okay and once we have searched all the existing records inside of our air table then we can create our filter so we're going to click on set up filter and then basically for this job link, we want to make sure that it does not exist inside of our air table. Then we can be able to create a record for this. So I'm just going to click on OK and this is going to be our filter. So I'm going to run this. And first it's going to add those records because I have clear all the records here. And now you can see we only have about 25 records here. OK, so now if I were to click on the search, for the filter, you can see we have check marks. So these bundles have been passed. And now if I were to run the job again, and you can see we have collected 25, but none of them gets to our table because these are all duplicates. And if we were to click here, you can see that none of them made it to our table. Okay, and then if I were to go to our table here and refresh, and you can see here that we still have 25 records. All right, so now once we set up our filter, and if we were to take a look at our job board, you can see that this is our job description, which it doesn't really contains all the information we need. So what we need to do is, is to be able to scrape the website and be able to provide a summary and ask ChatGPT if the skill sets for this job fits our resume. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new module 
we're going to call it the HTTP and we're going to make a request and the request URL is going to be the URL from the RSS fields. And then we're going to parse the response and this will basically extract the HTML data from this page. And then we can be able to take this data and ask ChatGPT for the prompt. So we're going to click on okay. So now if we want to test this thing, we need to go to our job board and delete one of the records. So this way, when we pull the data, it's going to add the unique record to our table. And if we were to run the job, and you can see that we have one job that's going to be fetched from our HTTP request. And if we were to view what's the response from the parsed value, and here you can see for this job link, and you can see that this is the HTML page that we extract. And if we were to actually navigate to the job, you can see this is the job posting. And if I were to search for the last sentence of this job posting, just to make sure that we include, yes, so you can see that it does have everything inside of the job posting. Okay, so once we have this, then we can be able to add our uh, another module for the GPT. And then we're gonna select GPT and then we're gonna choose the create a completion or prompt. So here we're going to create the connection. And then once you set up your open AI connection, and then you can be able to select the model so I'm just gonna use the simple GPT-4. And then here for the max completion token, I'm just gonna set it to zero. Since high values might use a lot of open AI credits, so we're just gonna set it to zero for now. And in terms of the GPT prompt, this is the prompt that I have. So given the data that got extracted from a LinkedIn job posting, and here you can see I mentioned the data, and this data is from the HTTP request, and this is the uh, full HTML page that we got extracted. And we want to have the GPT to read this LinkedIn job posting and only output a job summary with maximum 215 characters. So then in this case, we can be able to say, okay. And then for this one right here, so then here we can be able to select the result from the chat GPT output. So now if I were to come back to one of the job posting, so now if we were to come back to our table and let's say if I want to delete this record, okay. And then I come back here and I'm going to run this one more time. And then here you can see it's asking ChatGPT for the prompt. Okay, and then here you can see it has been completed for the operation. And this is the output. And then here is another jobs output for the summary. And then now what we can do is we can be able to replace the description with the output result from the ChatGPT. And it's going to prompt the ChatGPT and it's going to save the output to the Airtable. All right, so now you can see one record has been added. And if I were to navigate to the table, you can see that we have the ChatGPT prompt result shown here. All right, fast forward, I just made some changes to our daily job collector for the scenario. And I just want to explain those changes um, since I went into some issues and I just wanted to um, talk about that. So what we just talked about is adding the ChatGPT, right? So um, basically summarize the job description after we extract the data from the web. And we can see that this is the prompt that we have talked about. I have refined the prompt and basically we're saying that we still want 215 characters. We also want to make sure that it includes those key summary points from the LinkedIn job posting. And once we have that, and I also added another GPT module, it basically focused on getting the job matching score. So how close is it compared to the current applicants? So for example, here, based on the job description, which is the result. So you can see this is the result from last chat GPT prompt. And obviously I didn't put the full resume. I just put the summary of the resume at the, at the bottom here. And then basically you can see here, we want the chat GPT to analyze this and the return value is only gonna be a number for the job matching. So for example, 70% match between the applicant and the job description. So this is basically the second chat GPT module. And then after that, it's going to add it to the records. So here you can see this is the results for the first uh, chat GPT module, which is this one right here, which, which gave us the summary of the job description. And here you can see I also add another column inside of our Airtable for the job matching column. And here is basically going to be the result for the second chat GPT prompt. And then we're going to save this into our Airtable records. Now you can see here that there are some ignore modules here. And the reason is because we want to add some fallback if there is an error. So for example, if we're making an HTTP request and there's an issue, then we want to add a fallback so that it can be able to move on to the next iteration for the job posting. And here you can see that I add a sleep timer for 30 seconds. And the reason is because there could be a situation where we have too many requests made on the HTTP module. So that's why we add a sleep timer here. And if we were to zoom out a bit, you can see that we also add a, another set of workflow, which is very similar to what we have currently. 
And the reason is because we want to scrape two different job posts for LinkedIn. One is the full stack job list. And the other one is the software engineer job list. And then here I basically put them into two different feeds and then I add them into our scenario. And at this moment, there are about 20 records in the table and I will leave it to run every three hours for now. And then we will revisit after a couple hours. All right, so after a few hours has been passed and let's take a look at our table. And here we have roughly about close to 100 records now. And here you can see for this table, I have sort the job matching score by descending order. And here you can see we have some jobs that are have a high job matching score uh, for 85%. And the lowest I believe here is 5%. And I did check on some of those jobs and some of those jobs do seem accurate that they does not match with the candidates information for example on this one i don't have experience with civil engineer and you can see the chat gpt put a 20 percent job match percentage there and i also take a look at the highest job match percentage there for example this one it does match with a lot of the skills that i have on my resume and i will say that this job description has a lot of skills that are listed in my chat gpt input information and it does give a very high percentage for the job match, which makes sense. But I do want to say that there are some jobs that ChatGPT gave a very high job match percentage, but I don't think it's very accurate. For example, this one is an internship position, but I don't think I'm eligible for the internship position. And we can be able to avoid this by adding more requirements in the GPT prompt. Now back to our scenario, you can see that we only have two data source for the job list. We can also be able to collect more job lists by using the existing workflow that we have, eventually adding to the same table that we set. So the last part we want to talk about is the cost. So for ChatGPT usage cost, we have been using for only the two prompt for each of the workflow. And for 100 records, uh, we have a cost of $1.55 according to the ChatGPT usage cost. So just be mindful of the cost when you run this. And you can see that the cost that I have here is mainly from the GPT-40 mini, from the two prompts that I have here for both workflows. All right, so that's pretty much everything that we just went over. And you can see that just to summarize everything, uh, we can be able to set a timer interval on how often we want to dispatch the job. And to start a job, we first collect all the jobs from the RSS feed. And for each job post, we're going to filter. And once we have the new jobs, we can then be able to extract the job information and use ChatGPT to extract the key insights that we can be able to add to our table. And after we have our data, we can then be able to use this table to find the jobs that we can apply. So that's basically a summary of everything that we just talked about in this video. But there's also a lot of things that you can do. And one bonus tip or one bonus idea that I have is that you can also add an additional column for the job competition percentage. For example, let's say if you have jobs that already give you how many people have clicked on apply, then based on the number of people that have applied, as well as some insights, if you have premium about the applicant pool, then this can be some information that you can provide to ChatGPT for GPT to give you a evaluation on how, what's the job competition percentage look, percentage look like. So combined with the job matching percentage as well as the job competition percentage, we can be able to prioritize which kind of jobs we can apply first to increase the chance of getting hired. So that's basically how you automate your job search with make.com and ChatGPT. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more practical workflows. And don't forget to share it with a friend who's currently job hunting. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.